Hi everybody, it's Melissa. A um, couple of things I wanted to talk to you about today. The first one um, I wanted to do was my top of the day. It's by a company called, let me back up, called Drops Design and they just really do pretty work. So let me back up here and it's a, if you can see, I don't want to have to stand up if I can help it. It's just a, um, it's like a tunic length. I'll stand up a little bit. It's a tunic length and it's got the flounces all over it. Just in a simple gray co uh, cotton. I get lots of compliments when I wear this. Um, it wasn't that hard to knit, but I just think it really makes a statement. Um, but anyway, it's by Drops Design and I'll link it down below for those of you that knit. And I would encourage everybody to do that. Um, the next one, a little update on the Abaji. Uh, I've started noticing that my neck is getting really red. The top line, I have three lines. I've always had them a, had them a long time. Going across the top line is starting to turn red and flake and come off. And then the other two lines are starting to, too. Um, one change I'm going to make on my face, well, on my neck, too, is um, I said before in a previous video that I used the Clear FX, which does not have the... Hydroquinin. I learned, looked up how to pronounce it. Um, I'm going to switch for right now for three months until you get a whole, um, I guess the outer layer of your skin peels up. I think it takes like three months for your skin to shed. Um, so I'm going to use the complete Hydroquinin in the clear with that and then switch to the FX near my maintenance phase. The maintenance phase, you don't use the products quite as often. And then periodically you'll go back to using them full again to keep up all the good results if you've had. So I'm using it just full strength on right now. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, uh, I know that they um, they sell moisturizers with it. If you can, and, and stuff like to calm it down, if you can stand it and, and get by with it, the results that you'll have will be much, much faster if you don't use the moisturizers or the things like the, um, I think it's Tolerine or Action or something like that that they sell that actually kind of calms it down. If you can just get through it and get it all peeled off, you'll have much faster results. And this really, 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 really works great. If you have a lot of sun damage on your face, the high, uh, hyperpigmentation, um, boy, it'll really get rid of those age spots, the sun spots. Um, just the, like the masks of pregnancy and stuff like that. It just You should just look at the for, before and after pictures. Um, okay, the last thing I want to talk about is it's something, and I really thought about it if I wanted to share it on YouTube or not. It's not really a secret, but um, I have most of my life been very, very ill with Crohn's disease. I have a pretty bad, I've always had a pretty bad case of it. Um, so what this means is, not only am I battling getting old, because I want to look as good as I can. So not only am I battling getting old uh, and fighting that, I'm, I've had to battle Crohn's disease pretty much my whole life. I had my first surgery when I was a teenager. Um, as a child, I was very, very sick with, with intestinal problems all the time. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the emergency room, but in the hospital. I've had several surgeries. Uh, it's just not a very good disease, and it's a lifelong disease. There is no cure for it. But, uh, you know, it's something that, well, after my last surgery, I'll say this. I had my last surgery in 11, and I had been on the drugs. Let's see, I've got little notes here. I've been on infusions, drugs to, to suppress my immune system, which was scary. Uh, the steroids, hair thinning anemia, missing out on events, you know, my children were involved in, family were, were involved in. Uh, I know that there's been times when people with Crohn's disease have to go on prednisone and you can get the really swelling, the face can get really big, so that detracts, or you feel like it detracts from your looks. Um, when you don't get your vitamins, when you can't absorb the things that you need, that affects your looks. I remember just sometimes looking in the in the mirror and just having just such dark circles and being so pale and uh, you know thinking, man, I just look like crap. 
and I feel it too. So anyway, after my last surgery in 2011, um, I decided, I noticed, I had noticed that when I would eat bread, I would get really, really nauseous and sick. But when I would eat rice, I didn't. So I started looking into it, and that's when I discovered that people with celiac disease could had to avoid gluten. So I thought, well, what does it hurt? So I really just immersed myself in it, and you have to do it full way. Uh, so I, I, you know, started reading labels. I started reading the things that I needed to do. I started knitting the things that I needed to cook, the substitutions I needed to make, the things I could do when I went out to eat or couldn't do, the things I couldn't eat anymore. And I really miss my Krispy Kreme donuts. I like them a lot. But, you know, it's worth it. So I started feeling better and better and better. And usually after my surgeries, the Crohn's comes back immediately where they've done the surgery and the whole process starts all over again. So I went back Christmas, this past Christmas, for a checkup, for a scope, and he came in and told me, he said, I have never seen your intestines look so healthy. They, they look completely healthy now. And this is the first time, gosh, since I was 19 years old, I'm in my late 50s now, that somebody has told me my intestines look healthy. So if you're watching this and you have Crohn's disease, or if you know somebody that has Crohn's disease, please, um, Tell them, I've told everybody I know on the Crohn sites and stuff that I go to, tell them to at least think about going gluten-free, looking into it, studying it. I told my doctor about it. He was all for it. And I've gone off. I was on Humira. I was on Flagyl. I was on, you know, all the major bad drugs. I'm not on anything now. I just don't eat gluten. Now, if I do eat gluten, I get sick. So it's just not worth it to me. And that's why when I talk about gluten and the products and stuff like that, that's why I'm so strict about it and saying and pointing out to people, because if people come to my channel that maybe have Crohn's disease, maybe have celiac disease, I want them to know, okay, there is wheat, there are tocopherols in this, uh, there is uh, barley in this. Uh, you know, or this is derived from this, and maybe this is things that I have studied and really looked into, or things that you can add in your comments. Well, so-and-so and so-and-so -so has a good line. Uh, oh, good, I'll try it. Uh, so, I feel like, you know, I want to look my best, um, but this also means, since I had this disease, it means um, I'm going to have to do it all myself because I, I can't put Botox into my body. I just can't. Uh, I can't put fillers into my body. And I'm not going to have a facelift because any surgeries I have to have are going to have to be on my, for my Crohn's disease. So I'm going to save my surgery going under for that in case I have to have more, which very good chance I will. So I do everything I can to fight it. Uh, the aging process, but to be very mindful of the things that make me sick. So if you do, like I want to stress again, if you know somebody or if you have Crohn's disease yourself, please think about, um, I'm not saying going off your medications at all, no, my goodness no, but maybe explore the possibility of a gluten-free diet. The only thing I can say is it worked for me, it is wor it seems to be working for me. Uh, now I could have, get out of remission tomorrow. But so far, it seems to be working for me. Um, let's see. Let's see if that's everything I wanted to talk about. I think so. There's two more, one more thing I wanted to say before I sign off. And I'm doing a lot of videos here at the beginning, I know. But I've got a, quite a few things I want to say. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, so I'm sure I'll slow down. I'll, I'll run out of things to say and then you'll be bored with me. Um, but I just bought, I read in a magazine that uh, cover girl I'm not really good with nails I've never I have and I think it's I think it might be the Crohn's disease I have really bad nails that uh, split they're not healthy um, so I've just really tried to I hardly ever wear polish because I didn't want to you know draw attention to them but uh, cover girl has come out with something called Outlast and it got really good reviews and you put it on, you don't have to use a base coat or you don't have to use a top coat because 
with a base coat, top coat, nail polish, I try both ways with it. Nothing stays on me. I mean, about one day, I've got such bad ridges and stuff in my nails that it stays on me about one day and then it's peeled off. Um, <clears throat> so, I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to try it and then I'll come back and do a review. I got sort of a, a peachy coral color, orangey color, and then I got like a lavender color that I think is real pretty. Um, so, I'm anxious to try those. Oh, I'm sorry, I had it wrong way. So, I'm anxious to try those. Um, like it got it got voted up against Zoya and um, I think Essie and OPI uh, as the longest lasting polish that would stay on your nails the longest of any kind of nails uh, that they made nowadays. So um, I'm going to give it a try. I think I might try the, I don't know, I might try the, the orange first. So uh, anyway, have a good day and um, I hope you subscribe and Thanks for watching, and if you do have Crohn's, you know, uh, you can still live a normal life. I know it's discouraging, but uh, gosh, I, I got married, I had babies, I got divorced, I got remarried. In other words, I've lived a normal life, so you can too. Uh, if you do have it, good luck, and write to me anytime. Uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.